Some people, sadly, don't have great parents. But it's not just humans who can struggle with the whole parenting thing. <laughs> Some animals aren't exactly natural mothers or fathers. These are the worst animal parents in the world. Number 20. Alligators. Not only are gators terrifying and massively strong, they also happen to eat their young from time to time when they're feeling peckish. Yeah, that's right, alligators are cannibals when they feel like it. The gator mama will try to protect her babies, but it isn't always easy with so many predators on land and in the water drooling over some yummy gator snack time. And when it comes to another big and hungry gator, there isn't much a tired mom can do to protect her children. Scientists have recently realized, though, that this cannibalistic behavior might actually be a positive thing in the overall big picture. Basically, when gators eat other gators, their population gets naturally regulated, meaning their numbers keep in check. Otherwise, there would be too many gators roaming around, and that could be very negative and destructive for other animal species that also deserve to have a shot. A group of researchers analyzed data from years of alligator tagging and tracking and came to the conclusion that pretty much every adult gator eats baby gators. They checked the stomachs of 33 adults, and there were 56 tags from baby gators in total. One very hungry gator had eaten 14 babies. I mean, that's just greedy. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. Do you love monkeys? You think they're cute? Well, we have bad news for you. Monkeys are kind of rubbish at the whole parenting thing. And that should be clear from this shocking image. Rhesus monkey mothers constantly hit, kick, and abuse their babies. And more often than not, the female babies who are on the receiving end of that abuse grow up to be abusive mothers themselves, perpetuating an endless cycle of primate violence. Truly horrifying. As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Tasmanian Devil Tasmanian Devils, or Tassies as they are called in their home country of Australia, are very curious creatures. First of all, they belong to the family of marsupials, a group of animal only found in Australia. You know, they're the ones that have little pouches to keep their newborn safe and warm while they are growing into adolescence. The female Tasmanian Devils will mate with many different males during breeding season, which means that each litter can have several fathers. And Tassie litters are no joke. There can be as many as 50 babies in one litter. The Devil Mama will give birth to each child, called Joey's, one at a time. That must be a very long and painful process, and all for nothing. Because of her massive brood, she only has enough room to properly feed four Joey's. Nature can be very unfair sometimes, and this is the perfect example. This means that in a litter of 50 babies, only four will get enough nutrition to survive. The other 46 babies will either be left to pick up the scraps, or they'll just slowly and painfully starve to death. That's just brutal. It isn't really the mama's fault, of course. Some joeys just pick the short straw in the game of life. Number 18. Rabbits. When people think of bunnies, they usually associate them with anything that's fluffy and sweet and whimsical. But in reality, rabbits are more hardcore than you would imagine. They're real-life animals, after all, and not just characters in a children's cartoon. Before we get into the creepy stuff, did you know that a baby rabbit is called a kitten, or kit for short? So when a rabbit mama has a litter of kits, she will immediately leave the premises and leave them behind and alone. Like everything else in the animal kingdom, there is a reason for this. 
in the long run, it's actually beneficial to her babies, because this way, she's minimizing the chances of the burrow being found by hungry and dangerous predators. Her smell is too strong, and leaving them alone means that no other animal can smell the younglings. She'll come back once a day to feed them just for a few minutes, and then she'll leave again. But that's not all. Sometimes certain situations might arise that'll bring the mama to actually eat her babies. If she detects that one or more of her kits is sick or unhealthy, she will simply eat them so that they don't become liabilities for the healthy ones. Her supply of milk is not infinite, and it's always better to reserve it for those who have a chance of reaching adulthood. Number 17. Lionesses Lionesses are amazing huntresses. They're fast, strong, smart, and, well, amazing. But when it comes to motherhood, some human mothers would be outraged by the things they do. Keep in mind that lions live in prides, and within the pride, there are always very intricate and strong hierarchical dynamics. A mother lioness will kill and die for her cubs, until the father gets killed by another lion. Then she'll just happily and nonchalantly sit back and watch her kids being murdered by another lion. How's this possible? Oh, well, it all has to do with their strong sense of instinct. Lionesses are programmed to have an overwhelming desire to pass on the best genes to the younger generations, which makes everything a little complicated. A pride of lions always has an alpha male that is the father of all the cubs in the group, meaning that all the females only mate with him. The alpha lion has the duty of protecting the pride from other lions. But when a younger, stronger male lion dethrones him, that means that a new player's entered the game with a better set of genes. So they'll simply let the new alpha massacre the cubs in order to breed again and make a new litter that'll have a better chance at survival. It is purely the law of survival of the fittest in action. Number 16. Hippo did you know that hippos are the most deadly animals for humans in the world? Yeah, it sounds crazy, but it's true. They're very unpredictable and sometimes hands down vicious. Mother hippos are actually very caring and sweet. Like any other mammal, they look after their young ones with extreme dedication until they are fully grown and can make it on their own. The gestation period for a hippo is eight months, and a female will give birth to only one calf at a time so she can give it her undivided attention. The issue isn't the mothers when it comes to the hippos, but the males. It turns out they have somewhat of a taste for infanticide. It's a similar situation to the one with lions. Hippos live in large groups, also known as bloats, and in each bloat, there's an alpha male. When the ruling male is dethroned and there's a takeover of territory, sometimes the new tyrant will murder the offspring of the former alpha to gain access to the mother. That's because a female with a calf will not be ready to mate again for quite some time, so if the new king wants to start a new generation with his DNA, the only logical solution is to brutally massacre the existing children. And the attacks are just that, brutal. Number 15. House Sparrows as the saying goes, there's nothing more dangerous than a scorned woman, and there aren't in this world more vicious attacks of jealousy than the ones perpetrated by the female house sparrows. They might look very pretty and sweet, but oh boy are they wolves in sheep's clothing. Apparently, the male house sparrows are nothing less than cheeky, and they tend to misbehave quite a bit. In other words, they mate with several females at the same time. That results in one male having several baby mamas in different nests. And let's be honest, situations like that always end up in drama. But as unfaithful as the males are, the females make it up in absolute viciousness. A mama sparrow will actively seek out the nests of other females that have also mated with her partner and literally kill the chicks. She does this for a very simple reason. This way, her baby's daddy won't be so distracted with all his other families and will spend more time where he's supposed to be, with her and her kids. Now, just imagine if humans did something like this. Wouldn't it be horrifying to find out that your mom butchered your half-brother or sister so your dad would spend more time with you? Number 14. Harp Seals 
Baby seals might just be the cutest thing on this earth. Who wouldn't want to protect them? Mama seals certainly do. They care for their offspring so diligently, they actually don't even eat for the duration of the time they feed their young ones. Now that's dedication. They are amazing moms, but the bad news is they only do it for 12 days. Yeah, not 11, not 13. Exactly 12 days after their pups are born, they simply stop feeding them and leave them fending for themselves. That sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? Imagine leaving a 12-day-old newborn baby on the side of the road like, yep, that's it, get a job, I guess, good luck. The mother seal will leave her pup stranded on the ice for a month and a half. And it's not like seal pups are, at that age, able to survive on their own yet. Not at all. They can't hunt yet, and they can't fight off predators. So they're left completely vulnerable and without the means of feeding themselves. So much so that during that month and a half period of time, they lose half their body weight. When they're about eight weeks old, they're finally ready to start swimming and try their luck hunting. But still about 30% of seal pups die in their first year of life, and that's a lot. Number 13. Pandas. Pandas are so cute. They're clumsy and fluffy and cuddly and a little bit silly as well. I mean, who doesn't like pandas? But did you know they're actually quite negligent parents? For instance, a very curious thing about these adorable bears is that they very often have twins, which is very bizarre. But what's not so adorable is that the mother will often only care for and feed one of the twin cubs. In Mama Panda's defense, she does it out of necessity. Let me explain. Do you know what pandas eat? Bamboo. And only bamboo. Now, the thing about bamboo is that it is notoriously low on nutrients, which also means that a mother can't really produce that much milk on a bamboo diet. In other words, she only has enough milk for one cub, so she will choose the healthier, stronger one of her twins and only take care of that one. This means that one of the babies will get systematically ignored until it either dies of starvation or a predator gets to it, which is a pretty horrible way of passing away. But if the mother fed both siblings, the reality is they would probably both die, which would be even more terrible. Nature is wise. Number 12. Burying Beetle The one dream that every stay-at-home mom has is simply a minute for herself without her children pestering her, am I right? Moms are so busy and kids can be so exhausting sometimes. One minute they're screaming for a toy and the next they're refusing to take a bath. Well, burying beetle mamas have a very curious approach to those of their offspring that they consider annoying. They simply eat them. Imagine if human moms did that too. Horrendous. Delicious? No, horrendous. Jokes aside, this was actually studied by a group of researchers, and they came to the conclusion that burying beetles not only kill, but also eat the young that beg too much. Their instinct tells them that only the younglings that ask for food when they're really super hungry are the ones that are the strongest. And that means that only those ones have a better chance at surviving to adulthood. So they take the rest down to make sure of it. But it gets even creepier. The larvae of the burying beetle actually live in a mouse's carcass. Yeah, that's a lovely nursery, isn't it? So the mother consumes the flesh of the dead mouse, and then she regurgitates it to feed her larva. The thing is, there isn't enough meat for everybody, so she has to make an executive decision. Infanticide. Nature's scary sometimes. Number 11. Hooded Grebe. A hard truth is that every parent in the world secretly has a favorite child. But if you would ask them, they would never confess to it because it can be extremely hurtful for the kid that isn't the apple of their eye. Human parents are considerate, but the hooded grebe? Not so much. This beautiful South American bird lays two eggs every breeding season, and both parents incubate both eggs on a very cool floating nest. So far, so good. But as soon as the first egg hatches, the happy family of three immediately flies away, leaving the other egg behind. Now that seems a bit cruel. The abandoned egg will eventually hatch and be completely alone without anyone to take care of it. You can imagine how the future of that chick might not be super bright. 
Female hooded grebes do this because they're trying to maximize their chances of breeding successfully by laying more eggs than they can care for. That's because sometimes eggs don't hatch at all, and then they would have to wait a long time until they can try it again. This way, they ensure at least one of the eggs produces an offspring. After this little indiscretion and abandonment, hooded grebes are actually very sweet and attentive parents. Number 10. Black Eagles As you already know, eagles are very efficient predators. They're majestic and strong, and you don't get to become one of the world's most perfect killing machines by being a softy. In the case of the black eagle, their sense of competition and aggression starts very early, and by early, I mean in the nest. Yeah, eaglets start fighting each other when they're still living in the nest, and nest-based squabbles are very common. Talk about a dangerous playtime. You would think that the mama black eagle would interfere and tell her children to stop the nonsense, but no, it's actually quite the opposite. When the younglings fight, sometimes to the blood, the parents sit back and let the squabble un fold on its own. The thing is, these fights are actually aimed at killing each other. It isn't just a competition for attention, but that's the eagle's natural selection process. If a sibling is strong enough to kill another, it means that it already has what it takes to become a fully grown adult and make it on its own. It might seem like a very cruel way of teaching a lesson, but it works. Number 9. Hamster Motherhood is one of the most stressful experiences a person can go through. Being pregnant, giving birth, nursing, and taking care of several babies is extremely demanding. Human mothers will have a glass of wine at the end of the day, and hamster mommies have a different approach to dealing with stress. They'll just eat their babies. Yeah, how's that for stress eating? But there are many reasons why a mama hamster will eat her own babies, actually, and they apparently do it quite often. When a mother is too young and caring for her young ones is too much to handle, she will eat them. Also, when the mom senses danger and gets very scared, she will also eat her kids. For example, when she knows that a predator's on her scent, she'll eat her babies for energy and then try to escape the predator on her own. I mean, she could always just breed again later. Hamsters spend a lot of time grooming their babies as well. They do this to imprint their own smell onto them in order to recognize them later. If a baby smells different, let's say because a human being touched it, for example, then the mother can become very confused and eat the supposed imposter. So, you know, don't touch hamster babies. Number 8. Red Crab Christmas Island is a very beautiful place, and it's also home to the very unique red crab. It's actually the only place in the world where you can find them. Every year, they do a very impressive migration from the ocean towards the forest, and the beach gets painted red with billions and billions of tiny little red crab babies. And when I say they're tiny, they are minuscule, smaller than the nail in your little finger. The thing is, fully grown adult crabs migrate to the beach from October to December at the start of the wet season. They can only spawn their eggs once a month in time with the tides and a very special phase of the moon. This can sometimes overlap with the previous month's babies returning, and that's when things get a little complicated. Crabs aren't usually huge on feelings or emotions. They don't get attached to other crabs or anything like that. So when a mature female crab that is also pregnant goes down to the beach when there are literally billions of baby crabs unaware of the dangers the world has to offer and she feels like having a snack, that's her opportunity to chow down on infants of her own species. The irony on this one's quite strong, a mother on her way to laying eggs munching on newborns. Yeah, nature can be chaotic sometimes. Number 7. Koala Everyone loves koala bears, they're so cute and cuddly. Did you know that they're actually not bears? They are, in fact, marsupials. And they are also surprisingly pretty disgusting parents. Full disclosure, after this topic, you will never see koalas the same way. Their image will be forever negatively distorted in your head. Are you ready? Baby koalas actually eat their mom's poo. 
And not just any kind of poo, but a very special, custom-made, creamy, and extra wet poo made for the sole purpose of feeding the babies with. Ugh. This gooey poo is actually called pap. Yeah, I know it's gross, but it's true. And it gets a little bit weirder. This process takes place when the little joeys are about five or six months old. At that age, the little ones have to use their mouths to stimulate their mom's cloaca, also known as anus, so she can produce the famous pap. Think of it as breastfeeding, just with poo. As disgusting as this may seem, if the joeys don't do this, they can potentially die. The thing is that the pap contains special gut bacteria that they need to be able to digest all the eucalyptus leaves they eat. I guess they gotta do what they gotta do. Number 6. Skinks what would you do if you just laid your precious eggs and suddenly your senses started tingling and letting you know that several predators were sniffing around your egg clutch? If you were a sensible skink mother, you would probably just eat your eggs before they even got a chance to hatch. The skink logic here is actually quite effective. It's a lot better that her parenting efforts benefit only her and her own species rather than her predators. A lot of animals engage in this kind of behavior when they're outnumbered and they don't have a chance of winning against their enemies. If they have to protect themselves and their eggs, it just becomes too much to handle. So where's the harm in having a little snack, gaining some strength, and showing those annoying predators who's boss? They can always mate and lay some more eggs another time. It's a far better outcome than the inevitable scenario of them losing because they have too many fronts to cover, and allowing the predator to feast not only on the precious eggs but on their own flesh as well is just a bad idea through and through. At least when they feast on their own eggs, they gain a lot of energy and they actually have a chance against their enemies. In a way, the skink is a genius. There is no emotional attachment when it comes to pure instinct of survival. Number 5. Cuckoo's Mother in the field of negligent and absent parents, the cuckoo mama might just take the first prize. She basically lays her eggs in someone else's nests and then leaves forever, never to return. Yeah, that sounds quite horrible, but it gets worse. Because baby cuckoos are not your ordinary abandoned orphan that wants to help everybody and has a sensitive and fragile heart. Quite the contrary. The cuckoo chick hatches earlier than the other eggs, and then it becomes a total bully. It grows much faster than the other chicks, and soon after getting a little bit strong, they start forcing the smaller chicks out of the nest to die. Yeah, a family of very nasty specimens. The adoptive parents never realize something's wrong, of course. They simply feed the imposter assassin without giving it a second thought. Sometimes the adoptive parents are so much smaller than the cuckoo chick, it kind of looks surreal. How could they not notice? Their supposed baby is three times their own size. Like this cuckoo chick being fed by a meadow pipit. You can see that the cuckoo has mostly all of its feathers, which means it'll soon be ready to fly and leave the nest. But the meadow parents are still feeding it diligently, even if their supposed child is clearly a lot bigger than what it's supposed to be. I guess that, just like in love, instinct is blind. Number 4. Leopard Tree Iguana Native to the Chilean Andes in South America, this strange reptile has a very unique style of motherhood. Aside from having a very fashionable leopard print suit, they could nonetheless be considered by some people as terrible mothers. First of all, they actually exhibit viviparous reproduction, which means that they give birth to already formed and alive little offspring, which is rare in reptiles. The mother looks for the perfect den to start her family, and once she's gone through childbirth, she stays and looks after her young ones. but only for 48 hours. After that, she leaves forever and without any kind of regret. But she isn't all that bad. She leaves her babies a present, a big and stinky pile of her own poop. 
This parting gift is actually edible and highly nutritious, and it also contains valuable gut bacteria that our babies are gonna need if they want to be able to digest all the fruits and leaves and flower petals. But at this stage of their lives, the little ones are very weak and vulnerable, so Mama Leopard Tree Iguana actually seals the exit of the birth chamber when she leaves. You may think this is horrible behavior, but this way, they are actually safe from birds and other predators. When they reach a certain age and they're strong enough, they simply dig themselves out. Number 3. Black Bears have you ever heard the saying that goes, never get between a mother bear and her cubs? Well, in the case of the black bear, it might be slightly untrue, or hands down or wrong, even. Apparently, some black bear mamas will go so far as to get rid of one of her cubs themselves. Sometimes, when the mother comes to the conclusion that one of her babies is too weak or sick to survive, she'll get rid of it, because if not, she's putting everyone's life in danger. lives of her other cubs and her own. It's a small sacrifice for the greater good, if you will. There's also the situation of a mother with three cubs at the same time, and that might be a little bit too much for her to handle. So she will also get rid of one of them to keep moving forward. Once the mama bear has chosen the favored cub, she will then give her own life for it and fight tooth and nail. There isn't a more loyal and dedicated mother, then. On the other hand, ironically, if a female black bear only gives birth to one cub, there's a very strong possibility that she'll also abandon it. Raising a baby in the wild requires insane amounts of energy, and sometimes to do it all for just one baby just isn't worth it. Number 2. Horses Female horses have developed a very curious and unique social behavior pattern. When they get pregnant, they will systematically and almost compulsively continue to have sex with every male horse around. But mares don't do this because they're addicted to sex, they don't even do it because they enjoy it. They do it to trick the stallions that are living in their vicinity. It turns out that stallions are extremely aggressive with foals that they haven't fathered. But if the pregnant mare has sex with all of them, then all of the stallions will be convinced that the foal is actually their offspring. It's very manipulative behavior, but it works. If they don't do this trick, there's a very strong possibility that one of the males will attack and kill her baby foal. This behavior is so entrenched in their programming that when a pregnant mare is kept in the vicinity of a stallion that she's unable to have sex with, her body will literally abort the baby on its own. They prefer aborting the baby rather than having it born only to be massacred or attacked. If they don't put themselves through this painful experience, then what could happen would be worse. They don't really have a choice. Number 1. Darwin Frogs these cute little frogs, aside from having a really nice name, are an endangered species from South America. They kind of resemble overweight leaves, and the females of the species seem to be very in sync with modern times because they are extremely independent. <laughs> whereas the males are stay-at-home dads. How's that for female empowerment? After breeding, the females will lay about 40 eggs, and after that, they disappear, never to be seen again. They leave all the work to the father. The father frog then guards the eggs for up to three weeks, which by frog criteria is quite a long time until they start moving. At that point, Super Dad will swallow about 15 healthy looking eggs in order to keep them even safer from predators. Then the eggs will hatch into tadpoles, but still remain inside their daddy's vocal sac. They will remain there until they become froglets, at which point the father will simply cough them up and off they go. In a way, you could almost say that the dad is actually pregnant. But if daddy didn't do this, the tadpoles would have very few chances of survival. Keep in mind that tadpoles are a very tasty and sought after snack for all sorts of predators. Among them, you have bugs, fish, my little cousin Rodney, and even other tadpoles. As you can see, your mom not buying you that video game isn't the worst that can happen. Some animals have a very hard childhood. I had no idea animals could be so cold with their own children. In your opinion, which one is the worst parent of the animal kingdom? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.